Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. Thank you so much for watching Beyond the Science. As many of you may have heard, NASA made a huge announcement today, and I'll try to sum it up for you. NASA has just announced that astronomers have found seven, yes, seven exoplanets orbiting the same star 40 light years away. Now, what's really amazing about this discovery, and this is a huge discovery, is that these planets are all very Earth-like because they have similar sizes to Earth and potentially, well, the way they made a sound, it's very light that they have water on their surface to support living life forms. I know that these studies come up a lot and we talked about uh, many times in the past about a second earth found here, a second earth found there, but this is the first time ever that so many potentially habitable planets are orbiting around the same star. According to NASA, these seven planets all orbit around TRAPPIST-1, an ultra-cool dwarf star located around 40 light years away from Earth. Michael Gillen, lead study author and astronomer at the University of Liège in Belgium, said that this is the first time that so many planets of this kind are found around the same star. And here's the thing, not only have astronomers found these seven exoplanets, they were able to calculate the mass and radii of these planets as well. And from their calculations, they were able to find out that the planets are habitable rocky planets rather than gas planets like Jupiter. These three planets are most ideal temperature-wise and may even have oceans on their surface. And out of the three ideal planets, researchers say that TRAPPIST-1f is the most ideal and has the highest chance of supporting life. Although it's colder than Earth, it would be a completely livable place if we had enough greenhouse gases and the right atmosphere. So this is what we know so far about the TRAPPIST-1 star and its surrounding exoplanets. First of all, we call TRAPPIST-1 a star, but in reality, it's barely a star due to its temperature and mass in comparison to the sun. It has half the temperature of the sun and only a tenth of the mass. It's also red in color, very dim, and if you compare it to Jupiter, they're pretty much the same size, with the TRAPPIST-1 just a bit larger. So basically, TRAPPIST-1 is a tiny yet ultra-cool dwarf star. Now moving on to the seven planets surrounding TRAPPIST-1. A fun fact about these newly discovered planets is that they would have absolutely breathtaking views. I know that sounds kind of superficial, I know that sounds kind of Dumb, but still, hey, you know what? I always wanted to live on a planet and I wake up and just see other planets all around me in the sky. And this is way better than any ocean view or Central Park view because here the rich people can't just come and take up all the property that have the best vantage points. So anyway, back to the view. If you were to stand on one of these Trappist planets, the other six planets would appear in the sky and would be big, as in twice as big as the moon. Even more, if you were standing on the Trappist 1F planet, the dwarf star would be three times as big as the sun and would just hang in the sky with all its salmon hued beauty. Because the star is red, it glows a gentle salmon light over the planets. Another fun fact about these planets is that if you were to stand on the surface of one of them, you would be warm even though you're getting 20 times less light than you get from the sun. And this is because the star is so close to all these planets and the radiating energy is strong. Now not only is the star close to the planets, the planets are also close to each other. And by close, I mean within a space five times smaller than the distance from Mercury to our Sun. Because of that, we are able to study all the planets in depth and learn more about the planetary system. We were also able to find out the orbits of the surrounding exoplanets, which range from one and a half to nearly 13 Earth days. And if you're wondering how this amazing discovery was made, these small, ultra-cool dwarf stars are often neglected or overlooked when it comes to space studies. But in 2010, the TRAPPIST, a Belgian optic robotic telescope, begin to observe the space around a dwarf star, which is now the TRAPPIST-1, and study its light and changes in brightness. While studying, they saw shadows that periodically appeared, which actually turned out to be planets. In May of this year, it was announced that there were three planets orbiting TRAPPIST-1, but recently, by using ground-based telescopes and space-based telescopes together, it's been confirmed that there are seven planets in which we've determined the orbitals, distance from their star, radii, and masses. What's gonna happen next is that over the next decade, researchers have the goal of finding out what each planet's atmosphere is like, as well as finding out if these planets really do have water on the surface. The James Webb Space Telescope will be launched in 2018 to observe large exoplanets because it will be located 1 million miles away from Earth. Four additional telescopes named Speculus, based in Chile, will also survey the southern sky for this purpose. That will allow us to see more closely what lies in our universe. Another important question astronomers and researchers want to answer is, is, 
Are we really alone? And that's like the question I think on everybody's mind. Could there be more life forms out there that we've yet to discover? And according to Emery Triad, one of the study authors and astronomer at the University of Cambridge, I think we've made a crucial step towards finding if there is life out there. I don't think any time before we had the right planets to discover and find out if there was life. Here, if life managed to thrive and release this gas similar to what we have on Earth, we will know. Of course, finding out that there is a habitable planet and actually moving to that said planet are two different stories. It would take us millions of years to reach TRAPPIST-1 using current technology because it's 40 light years away. But there are already a lot of research going into creating faster spaceships, such as ones running on the M drive, which is an electromagnetic propulsion drive that generates thrust by bouncing microwaves in a closed container. And this could allow us to travel to planets like Mars in just 75 days. And although 40 light years sounds really far right now, it's still a crucial step towards finding out more about what lies within our universe. So yeah, pretty exciting guys. We could potentially have four Earths, counting this one, to live on. I mean, imagine that. More planets for us to potentially pollute and cows to fart on. But seriously, this is really super exciting news. And I'm willing to bet, I'm gonna call it right here. I bet you there's already life on these planets. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wager this. If, if, if YouTube still exists by the time we find or land on these planets, I'm gonna call it right here. There's life on those planets right now. And they may not all be friendly or edible. That's a crazy thought, right? If let's say we find a planet that's completely habitable and it has some sort of vegetation or uh, native animals on there. And of course, being humans, we're probably gonna eat them. I mean, come on, we drink coffee made from essentially cat poo. Yeah, we're eating the aliens. So I'm just wondering what would happen to us? Let's say we, we ate an alien plant or an animal. What would happen to our bodies? What would happen to our kids? Well, we look different, will we become deformed or have superpowers? Maybe humans have already ventured to the stars, but because of our diets and we ate the native plants and animals from other planets, maybe that's what caused us to look all alien. Anyway, I don't know, just stupid crazy theory, don't listen to me. But anyway, really exciting news from NASA. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you believe that these planets are going to be eventually habitable? And if so, do you think, do you think there's already alien life existing on these particular planets? And let's say both are true and they need human volunteers to be the first group to live on this planet, would you volunteer? Thank you all so much for watching this video. I'll see you.